Welcome back to another edition of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Our mission is to bring you great interviews with preppers from around the world so you can be better informed and better prepared for everything from a hurricane to the end of the world as we know it. I've been purchasing gold and silver from JM Bullion since before they were a show sponsor because they had the lowest overspot price of any dealer I've been able to find. JM Bullion now offers free shipping on all orders and Prepper Recon podcast listeners will get $5 off any order over $300. Just go to jmbullion.com and use coupon code PR5 at checkout. Today's guest is Dave Womack. Uh, Dave's putting together the upcoming Survival Summit. Dave, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. And then uh, you also do a little podcast of your own too, right? Can you tell us about that? I do, yeah. It's basically, um, it's it's every Monday on PrepperBroadcasting.com, and basically it's kind of the same thing you've got coming here. We interview a lot of different guests. Uh, my show's called The Gun Show, so obviously it's a little bit, usually leans heavier towards guns, but the long and short of it is we're just trying to get as much information out there as we can to different preppers and survivalists, and, and that's one of the great platforms we can use, so, uh, and, and much like you're doing here, so... If anybody wants to check it out, it's PrepperBroadcasting.com every Monday. Absolutely, and we'll have a link to that in today's show notes as well. Now, what initially woke you up to the need to prepare? Man, you know, for anybody that does a quick background check on me online, you'll see I'm a man of many hats. Uh, and in a previous life, I was a full-time illusionist. Um, I've traveled to 20-some countries performing my magic illusion shows and Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey hired me to headline, and they actually built five shows around me, which was um, both humbling and incredibly, uh, you know, the, the weight of the world on my shoulders. So I was basically ringmaster and and head promoter, uh, <laughs> and and then performer, and and all of that as well. So I performed the Magic Illusions and and had all my parrots in the show, and and we were touring around, and it was about six months into the two year tour. And, you know, I, my brother had always said, hey, Dave, you know, get some silver. Dave, make sure you get a year's worth of food. And, and I just thought, man, what a, what a whack job. I mean, a year's worth of food for what? You know, I'll just go to the grocery store or I'll just, you know, go to a friend's house if I need food or if I'm struggling. And, you know, I've never leaned on the government for anything and I never intend to. Um, and I, I might eat my own bullet before I go that far. Um, just for my own conviction, I don't believe personally I should be, um, you know, taking from the government. So I started to kind of look at this a little bit closer, and I thought, well, I should be a little bit more self-sufficient, self-reliant, self-dependent. Um, and and so my brother convinced me to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad's book called Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. And it's by Michael Maloney, um, who many of you have probably heard of, and he's made some pretty at the time, outlandish predictions, but those have all come true. And I remember reading that we were on the verge of the largest transfer of wealth that, that the world has ever seen, and I believe we're living that right now. And so he made this book back in 2008. I read it in about uh, I think 2009, 2010, and it really woke me up. And it, the reason it woke me up was because I looked at money as, okay, it's it's easy to make, it's easy to lose. Um I never looked at it as real. And when when Mike Maloney broke down how everything used to be backed by gold and silver and how there's there's really no tangible asset. Now, everybody knows that our dollar is not backed by anything, but not everybody understands and appreciates what that means. I mean, that means anytime they want more money, they just go print it. And, uh, you know, an example of that is you go to get a mortgage. Um, you go to the bank and you say, okay, I, I need to get $300,000 out. You might have to put down twenty or $30,000 and then poof, you've got 300000 Well, they didn't have that in the bank. They just created it right then and there. And then you pay back interest. And, and as you can see, after that happens a few times, um, the dollar becomes more and more devalued because the banks are only required to keep 10% on hand. And that's debatable if they're even doing that. So it woke me up to understanding that what if at the end of the tour with Ringling, I couldn't make another dime because our dollars went, went to crap? Uh, you know, what, <laughs> what would I do? And so I started investing heavily in, uh, precious metals like silver and lead. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about <laughs> lead 
a little bit later, but um, and that was like the, that was kind of the big awakening. And then I started to realize, well, <clears throat> maybe I should have a week's worth of food. Well, maybe I should have a year's worth. And so I soon I bought, you know, well, <laughs> I guess NSA knows at this point. So I bought a couple years worth of food, and um, and then I was kind of awake. And you know that that was the main moment for me. It was just reading that book. It took me from you know, fast asleep to awake. And then the final part of this was reading James Wesley Rawls' book, Patriots. <clears throat> it really, it gave me all the reasoning and all the proof I needed for what could happen. Um, and uh, it it ended up being the final nail in the coffin, if you will. It really woke me up and said, okay, I'm I'm all in on this. Yeah, I'm a big Rawls fan. Uh, we had him on the show, actually. And we had... Uh... We had the the five video series from Mike Maloney, the Hidden Secrets of Money. We had all five of those posted uh, a few weeks back. And for anybody that hasn't seen those yet, go to YouTube, put in the fo- the Hidden Secrets of Money, Mike Maloney, and it's a five part series, and it's just going to be the best education you've ever had on uh, what's wrong with the system. And <laughs> and why you need to get into gold and silver to to protect yourself against that. Yeah, he really he really breaks it down, you know. And another thing, just to help illustrate this, because uh, as preppers and survivalists, everybody's planning for the end of the world or some catastrophic event. And so my dad came up to you and said, "Oh, you've got, your brother's got you believe in that end of the world crap, huh?" And I'm, I'm censoring his his verbiage here. <laughs> thank uh, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. And I said, "Well, Dad, I mean, wouldn't I? I was just kind of frustrated, you know, because I'd made up my mind and." To have him just almost take me down in the process of saying this. I love my dad. I'm not trying to put him down here, but um, to illustrate, he, he says this to me, and I said, "Well, Dad, wouldn't it be nice that if you lost your job, you knew you had enough food and money to to last a year?" Oh, wait, <laughs> he had just lost his job and he was starving. Wow. So yeah, it really sunk into him that oh, okay, maybe there's a little bit more to this. It's not just about uh, societal collapse and civil unrest or government takeover or invasion by China. It's about being able to count on yourself when you need it. And, um, you know, that's just one more scenario of, of thousands that you could look at as, oh, okay, I lost my job. But, yeah, don't have to worry. I can feed my family for a year until I get back on my feet. Sure. We all have our own personal uh, stuff hits the fan moments, don't we? So tell us about the upcoming Survival Summit. Well, the Survival Summit came about because we wanted to get as much of this information into people's hands as we could. You know, we had, we had the radio show going. We've got... The prepper, uh, the prepperproject.com is our, our website where we really promote a lot of things to guys, but I wanted to do something more. My brother came up to me with this idea that immediately resonated with me. He said, what if we got the top experts to all talk about their area of expertise and we spread it out over the course of a week and we gave it away for free? What do you think? And I thought, holy crap, that sounds like a lot of work. And he was right. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Um, so what, what it is basically, January 20th through the 26th, um, we got the best minds from around the world in the survival space. And um, they're all doing presentations between an hour to sometimes hour 45 long. And this is free for people to attend. We'll give them some information here on, on how to sign up um, to get the details. But Basically, it's free, and it's literally, we advertise as like 24 hours of content. It's like 40 hours of content by the time we've all, it's <laughs> said and done. Um, and so 40 hours of edited content for guys. It's it's both, um, we've got like video presentations, we have slideshow presentations, we have just some, some audio kind of voiceover type presentations as well. But um, it's, it, I think it ended up being 32 or 33 of the world's most, you know, sought after experts and everything from, you know, um, shooting and tactics to gardening. I mean, we really wanted to appeal to the whole false left, right paradigm of beliefs. Uh, but everybody, we wanted, whether you're, whether all you're interested in gardening, well, we've got a ton of stuff here. If you want to learn how to trap and skin and prepare animals and, and one of the, the people that we interviewed here, Buckshot Hemingway, or is it Buckshot Hemming? Buckshot Hemming, sorry. Uh, he he pays his taxes every year off of selling the skins with trapping. And so not only does he feed himself and his family, but he pays all the government tax. So we we got, you know, some just to, off the top of my head here, a couple of the top guys. We got Travis Haley. Uh, if you guys have ever watched a Magpul 
Um, a Magpul DVD, you've probably seen him. He also has a great one on Pantheo Productions. Um, and, and he's, uh, I hope I don't botch it here. Marine Recon, I believe is what he was. Um, mm-hmm. and, and just a, a brilliant guy. So we have him coming on here as thinkers before shooters because far too many preppers are guilty of saying, you know, if somebody comes up my driveway, I'll just shoot the mother effer. And that's not really going to be the case. And so Haley breaks down, you know, his failure point. And when he, he put two rounds in a guy's face at point blank for his first kill and the effect it had on him. And because he admittedly he said it was a bad kill. So, and, and the scenario that goes around that really makes you think through things. Um, it makes you think of things that the preppers have probably not fully thought through. Um, we've got how to grow all your own food without irrigation, even if you live in a dry climate with Paul Wheaton. We've got Marjorie Wildcraft, Tess Pennington, James Hubbard. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. James Yeager, um, Jim Cobb, Jeff Anderson, Chance Sanders. This is a good one. Um, if you want to learn how to do escape and evasion from unlawful restraint um, or you're stuck in the city when, when you know, when it happens, whatever it is, he shows you how to get out um, and even goes through some basics of lock picking and why you need to understand how to pick locks because it's a, it's a secret way to get through different buildings and avoid all of the other issues. And he breaks down a lot of things that everybody needs to know there. Um, I mean, I could, I could just go on and on with the list of, um, of speakers here. And I'll just give you two more. Um, Scott Hunt, who many people know from Doomsday Preppers, he is... Uh, he's the guy that scores everything at the end from Practical Preppers. He and Southern Prepper, um, you know, were involved in that for a while, and, and so we were able to get Scott Hunt on. And then Sam Kaufman is a, a former Green Beret medic. So we, we've got a lot of Special Forces guys, and from his medic background, he decided he wanted herbal remedies for everything. And so he breaks down some amazing things of what you need to do and things you need to be aware of um, as well as how to get started in herbal medicine just to simply fend off a cold or if you're coming down with the flu or, you know, whatever it is that you can imagine, um, he starts to break down all the ways to, to, to help yourself when there is no doctor. So it's a, it's a star studded lineup for sure. And, uh, I'm just so stoked to be able to get people this information and, um, and, and hopefully I think save some lives at the end of the day. And that's fantastic that it's all going to be online because there's great prepper expos all over the country. But if it's not in your state, for most people, uh, it's not practical for them to be able to take off work and, uh, and head up there. And, and then, uh, you know, if you happen to be in the industry and you've got a booth to man at the, at the expo, you usually don't really get to listen to the speakers or, or take any of the classes because uh, you're busy at your own booth. So that's fantastic that it's going to be online and it's going to be very widely available. And I think that's, that's just great. Well, and then one other thing that we did for guys too, you know, keep in mind, we've, we've been working literally 18 hour days. There's a team of three of us. Plus we've, we've outsourced a few things uh, working 18 hour days for the last two months, trying to get all this ready. And so just to, intense amount of, of editing and, and work and interviews and, uh, and promotions and affiliates and all this stuff. And so we've been really slaving around the clock. But uh, if somebody is interested in buying this, because let's say that they, they're not available for those days or they miss one of the days where they want to see a presentation, you know, most people would probably expect to pay about 50 bucks a DVD if, you know, if you're buying this on, uh, on an infomercial or in a store. Um, but we're giving access to this after the event. Again, it's free for the week. Um, if you can't attend it, you get all 30-some presentations for $67. Um, and so that's something that will be available afterwards in case, you know, somebody's right now saying, oh, shoot, I'd like to see it. I'm going to be out of town. We will have it for sale. And obviously the, the sales um, help fund what we did to put it together. And if you don't want to buy it, then you certainly have access to it for free. But we want to just let people know. That option's out there should anybody, um, you know, want to take us up on that. Sure, and that's a lot of great classes. You know, uh, you think about how much you pay for a college class these days and what you get <laughs> in, in, in the mindless information that you get out of that, you know, so that's that's a real value, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And, and I want to throw this out here, too. Um, 
you've got a link generated for um, to be able to get people the information on the Survival Summit. So, guys, instead of just going to the survivalsummit.com, click on the link here um, and and basically follow that because what it'll do is it'll tell us where you signed in from, and then of course. We'll throw a kickback to uh, to anybody that that supports us like that. So uh, make sure that you you click on the link here versus just go straight to the website. But uh, check out that link to go to the survivalsummit.com, and there will be about a five to five and a half minute video kind of explaining a little bit more about what we're doing, who's involved, and then um, uh, sign up for your details, and we'll email you all the information on how to do it because the way we're marketing this is through small channels like this. Um, uh, I don't mean small in a, a derogatory way. I mean just a very direct um, like-minded person to like-minded person uh, approach. We don't want to just blast this out on the internet. We want to go through the right channels of people that um, have a very targeted specific market like here so that this information's only truly available to survivalists and preppers as opposed to the general public. And so, uh, again, click on the link here, sign up. It's absolutely free, and um, and everybody can can take advantage of all that information because there is a wealth of information here. Very cool. And, Dave, what would you say are the top five things a new prepper needs to do? Uh, you know, that's always the million-dollar question, right? Um I think it goes deeper than five things, but on the surface, people need to make sure they've got beans, bullets, and Band-Aids, um, but they also need to make sure they have water and communications. Um, my grandfather fought in World War II. He's got some uh, remarkable memoirs he wrote up about it, um, and one of the things he said that was the biggest um, challenge or frustration or, or negativity about the whole war, when we asked him, it wasn't about losing friends. It wasn't about... You know, seeing the gruesome things that, that he saw and was involved in, it was communications. Uh, he said that's the number one most overlooked thing was he wished they had better comms and they didn't have the ability to communicate with each other. And honestly, I can see that being a big thing in the in the prepper survivalist niche. I think uh, if you watch somebody like Southern Prepper One, he just did a, a great video the other day, um, and it was a scenario where he comes in, um, or he's, he's in his communications building and some guys come in to get training, but he breaks down the, the communication schedule and how to monitor things and when, when not to transmit. And these are things that most preppers are like, well, I'd rather buy a new gun than, than go get my ham license. Well, I can tell you in a world where we are so connected, we've got Facebook literally at the fingertips while we drive. Um, you can be 30,000 feet in the air on an airplane and you're still connected to the world. What if that was shut off right now? How would you reach your grandma down the street? How would you reach your kids who are at school? How would you, how would you even communicate? I think everybody would be suffering from internet withdrawals and communications withdrawals. And so I think that's one of the big things that people, um, overlook in the beginning. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different communications plans from CB radios to marine radios to ham radios and then your traditional kind of two-way radios like you take hunting or, you know, if you're, if you're hiking up in the woods. But one area that I think is underlooked within the communication realm is you can actually buy an FCC license. And what the FCC license does is it's good for 10 years. You don't need a ham license for it, but it issues you, I believe, four to six um, of your own private channels that nobody else is supposed to have access to because you're paying for them. Um, this is like casinos and um, and cruise ships and security teams and police officers. They all have their own band that they communicate on. But beyond that, if you go to a, a radio supplier, I'm not talking about Radio Shack or Best Buy, actually go to a Motorola two-way radio distributor, um, sign up for an FCC license. I can warn you, it's kind of tricky to get. Um, but if you can get it, you can have your own scrambled private radio line. And I think that's really important for guys out there and um, who are taking this seriously because secure communication now is, is it doesn't exist. NSA spies on everything that we do um, and won't even admit to spying on members of the, of the Senate, um, <laughs> which is, uh, we're in a lot of trouble. So communications um, is a big thing. And then I think each of those go a lot deeper. Um, uh, and I think a lot of people fall short in several of those areas, which we can get into, uh, <coughs> whatever. 
And do you see uh, season preppers fall short in, in other areas besides communications? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, I think probably the, the biggest area is um, is training. I think most people, preppers become hoarders. I think uh, they're like, okay, I got my food, I got my guns, oh, I'll get some more guns, oh, and then I'll get some more guns, and then I'll get some ammo, and 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 people get so wrapped up in just thinking that buying the stuff will save their lives. But I, I'll challenge you out there, everybody listening to this, how many times a week do you put on your gear and go train? And I don't mean just throw on your gun and, and some earmuffs and go shoot at paper. I mean, how often do you put on your bulletproof vest? How often do you strap on those knee pads and elbow pads and you get your comms roaring, you get your buddies out there and you do some break contact drills or react to contact or um, react to ambush or, you know, how often are you guys out there doing this? Because I can tell you that probably 99.9% of us um, don't practice this on a weekly basis. And if you are at all concerned about your food uh, your water, your family, it, it does nothing to just go buy this stuff unless you live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and <laughs> if, if that's you, then okay, maybe you don't need as much training. But I, I, I can just tell you firsthand from hiring a, uh, army lieutenant, we, we hired him for a DVD we filmed called Own the Night, his tactical training for preppers, basically, real basic stuff out of the Army Infantry Field Manual, FM 7-8. And he walked us through that, but we did it all under night vision to really simulate stress and to show how crappy you really end up being. You might have all the stuff and think you're real high speed and good, but I can tell you guys, if you're not out there, if you're not practicing, you're going to die. You're going to fail, and you just you have to do it. And it goes for all areas, not just, not just uh, you know, shooting. Um, what about your systems of redundancy with water? How... You know, if one fails because of the electrical grid, how are you going to get your family clean drinking water? Where is it going to come from? How are you going to filter it? Um, you know, food, there's a thousand ways to, to skin a cat. And there's a thousand ways to cook it. So I don't think that's as big of a thing because we all practice cooking on a daily basis, at least most of us. Um, but then Band-Aids, you know, if you go into the, the medical side of things, you got to get some, some herbal medicine training because... Um, you know, pharmacy drugs aren't going to be available. No matter how many fish antibiotics you stock up on, they're just not going to be available. So get practice, a practical practice in all of this until you reach your failure point. Again, let me restate that. Practice until you fail. Because if you don't fail, you aren't going to learn. So hit those failure points, make those adjustments, and get out and train again. Um, a perfect example of that is my brother came over here. We did a practice bug out and, um, in what we call survival camping. And so we hiked two miles uphill. Um, well, first of all, we drove an hour out this dirt road to get to this middle of nowhere. And then we hiked two miles uphill with, uh, 80 pounds of gear. Okay. Most people can't do that. And I'm not Superman. I, I, I do train. I'm relatively physically fit. Um, but can you walk two miles with all of your gear? Try it. Hit that failure point. See how far you can go. We get up there. It's 90 degrees during the day. We get up to this lake. Uh, it's called Round Lake. Um, or excuse me, Moose Lake. And uh, and we, we get up there, and we're just sweating our butts off. So we set up camp. Well, it got down to 38 that night, and we were not prepared. Our bags were not packed properly for that kind of weather. And so literally shivering is what kept us warm all night. Um, just, just short of spooning with my brother, which wasn't happening. <laughs> uh, you know, it, that's what it took. We reached that failure point. And so I came back home. I redid my bug out bag because I thought in the middle of the summer that I wouldn't hit 38 degree weather on a 90 degree day. Obviously we were pretty high up in the mountains for this and I learned. And had I not reached that failure point, um, that could have happened in a survival situation and it would have been, you know, could be disastrous. And so practice until you reach failure points. And what do you think the main threats to our food supplies are and what should we do about that? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I think we have a lot of threats. I think right now we have, you know, there's, there, there's been droughts in the Midwest um, over the last couple of years that have had a significant effect on, um, on our food supply in America. I think Monsanto and the GMO 
movement has made a huge, um, uh, they've made huge advancements in, in the ability to grow food in more broad areas, um, and under more extreme conditions. But at the same time, the, the ramifications, if you will, of that food are, are, are vast. And so I think that's a concern. More recently, the radiation from Fukushima, um, there's, they're doing some independent studies and testing up and down the West Coast right now. Um, and that's being, um, being done by Alex Jones and his team. And they're finding, you know, thousand percent increase in radiation in, uh, places throughout San Francisco. Um, and, you know, they're working their way up to Seattle right now. So radiation is a huge thing. Um, our Pacific Ocean is dying. And I'm not one that you would call a greener, but if you dump a bunch of radiation in, uh, or nuclear fallout or, or any toxic things like that in the environment, it's eventually going to come back and hurt us. So I think there's a big threat to our food supply there. Um, and those are just the immediate things. So, you know, what would you do, for example, if you could no longer get any fish, um, or, or anything out of the ocean? Where's your food coming from? Uh, and do you have that food stored up at all? So I think that's big, but, you know, in a, in a grid down, you, I don't know if you're going to believe this, but my number one concern about protecting my food in a grid down is from the government. Um, Obama signed Executive Order 13603, uh, yeah, 13603 and called the Emergency and Non-Emergency Powers, where he uh, assigned himself dictator and control, he maintains control over water, all human and animal food, all transportation, all energy, all construction materials, all health resources, all farm equipment, fertilized fuels, and much more. All right? Again, Executive Order 13603. If you don't believe me, guys, look it up. And the scariest thing about this is that it's not specified under terms of emergency. This can happen right now if you wanted under Executive Order 13603. Obama has control over everything, making him a 100% full-out dictator. Um, so, yeah, will we have, you know, uh, groups of, of marauders coming at us trying to steal our food? You bet. We're going to have people that are less prepared than we are that are going to try to steal our food. Um, and, and thank God we live in a country where uh, our founders have strong morals, strong beliefs, and they said that it's a God-given right to be able to protect and defend ourselves, uh, and to live free. And, um, and I think that everybody needs to, whether you're religious or not, take a look at that, that idea, that concept, and realize that it is your responsibility to, to, uh, to take care of yourself and protect yourself, your family, and your friends, um, uh, above all things. Um, you know, is DHS going to come by and steal your food? They sure might. Look at what happened in Boston with the Boston bombing and how immediately they had martial law without actually declaring it martial law. And they ripped people out of their homes at gunpoint without warrants. Um, that's illegal. That's illegal. And those are in times of peace this is happening. So wake up, everybody. Wake up because this stuff's coming. And uh, there's going to be a lot of threats to your food it, from government to, to roving marauders. And, and the people flooded into the streets after that in Boston and were cheering because they they caught the one 19-year-old kid that had caused them to all just surrender their Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah, you know, and the scary thing about that is is when you look into, uh, and I don't know what your listenership believes on that, but if you look in false flag, type in false flag Boston, um, and, and mysteriously how that same group of, thugs uh, showed up at another incident um, where martial law wasn't declared uh, on the East Coast. It really makes you wonder how legit that was. There's a lot of questions that come up. Um, and, and not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but I want people to think. I think that's one of the biggest things that Americans are failing to do right now. We do not think for ourselves, and we have to if we're going to make it through whatever's coming. Look up the details in that. Um, uh, both of the brothers had known ties to CIA. Um, why would somebody in the CIA bomb a bunch of people and blow them up and, and kill and maim and injure? Um, was it to test the idea of martial law? 
Uh, I would encourage people to do their own research on that because there's a lot more to it than the media reported. And as you just said, we lost our Fourth Amendment that day without even having martial law declared. So real scary stuff. And and at the very least, uh, it was a very uh, – maybe not for the victims, but uh, for the government, it was a very lucky area to have that happen because – to be able to go through that that house to house search like that, I don't think they'd have got away with that in Texas, and I don't think they maybe would have gotten away with that in certain areas in the American Readout in the inland Pacific Northwest. And I think maybe there's some places in the South that uh, they probably couldn't have got away with that. So it was very fortunate for the government that that incident happened in Boston, where we have a very compliant populace. <laughs> So yeah. at the very least, we can say that's uh, very coincidental that it happened there. And then, uh, and then also, I think everybody's pretty well aware that we've got facial recognition software. And if you've got two aliens that are here on green cards um, or, or, or new citizens or whatever, my wife had to go through that because she came here from France, and they've got your – fingerprints and they've got uh, your photographs and they've got blood tests and they've got DNA swabs and they've got everything on these guys and with all the facial recognition software we've got out there the FBI had to go to Fox News with their pictures and ask the American public to call in because they didn't know who these guys were yeah and then later it was proven that they did know who they were so we're we're just being lied to left and right. I mean, our our president's a prime example with everything from the NDAA to uh, to to building your own jobs um, to the health care. I mean, this guy's just a a lying sociopath, and and uh, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we're in a real mess. And uh, now back to prepping. Um, what's a couple of things we can do to always make sure we've got water? Well, like I said, I think that's one of the top five things that preppers need to do, and it's probably one of the top things that they forget about or overlook. Um, real simple things, you know, you can just go to a farm supply store and, and buy a water holding tank. Um, just fill that up with a hose and keep it someplace uh, where, you know, weather won't affect it. You know, if you live in the desert, put it in some shade. If you live someplace where it freezes a lot, maybe dig a hole and put it, you know, somewhat buried in the ground to keep it from freezing. Um, do what you need to, to protect that, um, and, and rotate through it every three to six months. A lot of people think that, that water has a indefinite shelf life and it, it doesn't. Water actually goes bad. Um, and so rotate your water, uh, it, as much as you can and, but always keep it topped off. So, you know, maybe just have a water rotation day on your calendar once every six months and, and rotate through that. Um, another thing that I think people need to do is buy emergency rations of water to always keep in their car. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've driven. I've driven over, <laughs> if you ask Obama, I've been to all 57 states. <laughs> Free an idiot. Um, but I've driven all over this country and uh, in all 50 states. And I cannot tell you how many times I've been stuck or stopped because of bad weather or car accidents or train accidents. Um, or just stuff flying off back of the semi and shutting down the freeway, uh, or they're doing blasting on the freeway because they're widening it. There's been many times I've been stuck in my car for for more, to, you know, two hours to, uh, to a significant amount of time longer than that. And and uh, man, that's a good way to not only run out of gas, but it's a good way to really get thirsty. And try going three hours without water or anything to drink when you're already thirsty to begin with, and you're planning on just grabbing you know, some water or soda at that next rest stop that's just a mile up the road on the other side of whatever you're stopped behind, that's really frustrating. You sit there thinking for that long about how thirsty you are, you're going to wish you had some water with you. And, again, this is in times of peace. Um, imagine if that's a, a, a roadblock by, um, you know, government uh, servants, or maybe it's uh, a roadblock from a gang because the, they want to collect a tax to let you through after after it's hit the fan. So, Always have some water, and um, believe it or not, Walmart has a great 72-hour bag now. Um, and so I actually got these. I keep them in my car, 
Uh, it's little packets of water. I think they're, they're rations for like cruise ships and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, or like emergency lifeboats. But, uh, it's emergency water and it's an emergency pack of really dense, um, like protein bars. I think it's like 35 bucks or 50 bucks for a 72 hour kit. It comes in a tactical bag. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty good deal. And so I suggest having that so you always have water in your car because, you know, with how much we all spend in our cars, um, it's likely to have something happen while you're in your vehicle. You know, and again, like I said, at the house, have have a water rotation every three to six months and just keep a big, uh, a big, several gallons, you know, three to 500 gallons because the average person goes through a gallon of water, you know, per person per day. So if you have two people in your family, well, you're going to go through about 700 gallons a year. Do you have enough of that on hand? So all stuff to think about for sure. And uh, what are some of the things that we can do to make ourselves less of a target when it hits the fan? Um, <laughs> I think the number one thing to do is not do what I'm doing. <laughs> don't don't have a radio show where you're where you're uh, yelling about Obama because yeah, that'll get yeah. you on the what the watch list fast. But yeah, uh, I, but I'm, I'm sure I would know, say that something proper about this, and and he and I both agree, and I know that a lot of people do too that. If you're not on the watch list, you're not doing something right. Yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right? You're not a patriot if you're not if you're not a uh, uh, their designated terrorist watch list. You know, they they say in their in the training manuals. I, I read a ridiculous article and it was like 72 things that that um, list you as a potential terrorist. If you have more than three days of food, if you have ammo that's dry, stored in a dry box, if you uh, are Christian, um, you if you served in the military. If, if yeah, if you believe that Islam is radical uh, or that there is radical, it doesn't matter. We're all terrorists, uh, and I think when Bush said you're either with us or you're with the terrorists, uh, I think you need to stop and really think about that. Yeah. What does it mean to be with us, yeah. or what does it mean to be the terrorist? Um, I think he drew a line in the sand that day unknowingly, and with how loosely they've thrown around the word terrorist, um, I, I think everybody. That is a patriot is a terrorist. And in their own, in their own words, George Washington was a quote unquote terrorist. He was, he would not be welcome in today's army is what they're saying. And he's the one that made the army. So let's just be real clear about who us and terrorists are. Um, and, and so what do you do when you, to make yourself less of a target when it hits the fan? Uh, I think a lot of it happens with what do you do before it hits the fan? And, and, um, yeah, I, I personally am, am religious. Um, I often refer to myself as a foul mouthed Christian, which uh I'll blame my years of entertainment for that, but <laughs> um but it doesn't mean my beliefs and my morals aren't there. Uh and and one of the things that the Bible says is in Ezekiel, he says that basically if you see danger coming, you must sound the alarm. Uh and if you do sound the alarm and danger comes, your life will be spared. If you, uh, and obviously I'm grossly paraphrasing this, if you see danger coming and you don't sound the trumpet, then your life will not be spared. And so I, I took that quite literally and I said, okay, I see a lot of things happening. How can I help as many people be ready as I can? And I, I don't remember who said this, but somebody said to me, you know, the more people I can help be prepared, the less people I have to kill. Absolutely. Very well it, said. Right? So <laughs> it's kind of, kind of freaky, but, um, yeah, so I, I think just to, to maintain a low profile as much as you can, you know, make it hard for people to find you. Um, I have addresses all across the United States. Um, it, it makes it really interesting when someone tries to send me a package. <laughs> uh, you know, my, my driver's license is a residence that I do spend a lot of time at. I don't spend every night there. Um, I make it harder for people to track me down than the average person. Um, and part of that comes from somewhat of a transient lifestyle of always being on the road. But I think that um, it's important to not, to, just to be aware of where your address shows up. You can look up public records and find out where almost anybody lives um, or where they tell you they live. And so that's important. We had somebody look up, do a, a reverse dom- uh, d- domain search on our website, and it shows up with an address that we're no longer at. Now, legally, we need to fix that. It's something we're working on. But um, even simple things like that can give away your location. So to have a show talking about, hey, go buy a year's worth of food, some bulletproof vests, and a bunch of ammo, and, oh, by the way, here's where I live, you don't want to be doing that. But 
You know, you also, you don't want to be driving a tank down the road. You don't want to be driving a big souped up Hummer down the road. Um, when it hits a fan, you want to maintain that low profile. Um, and, and one other thing to think about is the ability of blending in. And actually, uh, I believe Chance Sanders talks about this in the survival summit. Um, so I won't, I won't totally wreck his presentation here, but what kind of social signature do you give off? And are you capable of changing it? So in other words, are you six foot two, um, scrawny with a weird haircut? Um, yeah, that's, that's probably me. Uh, <laughs> but when I walk down the street, I don't have a very low profile, um, uh, appearance. Now, somebody that's 5'8 or 5'10, that's relatively clean shaven, he wears a, a basic, um, you know, Wrangler and, and a button up shirt, um, he's gonna blend in a lot easier. His social signature, his social profile is much more, um, what they refer to as gray man. He, he goes unnoticed. Um, you know, another example is, is do you have the ability to blend in like the FedEx guy, or the UPS guy? How many times have you seen the UPS guy walking through a mall with a package? Now, it doesn't take a scientist to realize that that could be a fake UPS guy with, and God forbid this ever happens, uh, but it could be a fake, uh, it could be somebody who's trying to bomb a place and they go in as a UPS guy. Um, think about in a time of civil unrest, how can you move about freely? Can you dress up as a UPS guy and walk through the building? Can you dress up as a, you know, as, as a guy in a hard hat and a vest that's working on a building? He's got a clipboard. Can you blend in that way? Um, there's some different challenges that Chance Sanders talks about that are, that are pretty funny. Um, and so I encourage you guys to listen to his presentation at the Survival Summit. But, um, you gotta be able to have a low profile. Not if, not if you always do, but you need to be able to have the ability to blend in. Um, when it hits the fan. It was a long answer for your question, but hopefully that helps. Uh, it's a very good, thorough answer. We, we really appreciate that. And uh, Dave, tell us, uh, we're going to have links to get to the Survival Summit, of course, from the from the show notes today. But now there's going to be some people that are listening on YouTube and, and iTunes and Stitcher that may not be on the, the website to to click that link. So can you tell those folks where they can find you? And then also tell us one more time where we can find your Monday night uh, prepper show. Um, all right, yeah. So to, to sign up for the Survival Summit, let me revert the question back to you. Do you have a place where you could put that link um, so that uh, that people go through you for it? or Well, anybody that comes over to PrepperRecon.com will, will see it there at the bottom of the page. But uh, but for everybody else, there may be some people that, that don't necessarily navigate through there, and that's fine. Okay. Um, for everybody else, you can just go to TheSurvivalSummit.com and just enter in your information there. We'll email you all the details about how you can show up, who's there. Um, it's, it's a pretty thorough website, so you can see everything um, in, in that location. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of great information. And my main concern is that everybody gets that information because I think it's really, really important. So, uh, Dave, thanks so much for coming on this show and thanks for all this great information. And I'm really looking forward to checking out the Survival Summit. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on here. And, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, um, just, just send us over, uh, we track that YouTube channel pretty closely um, where our video is hosted um, on the Survival Summit. It's a Prepper Project YouTube channel. But uh, ask us any questions you have over there or over at The Prepper Projects, our main blog. Um, but but most importantly, guys, just sign up for The Survival Summit and uh, get ready. Take some notes, and, and um, I promise you, you're going to end up with more information than you realized you needed to know. So it will be fun. Awesome. Thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by CampingSurvival.com. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including bug out bags, long-term storage food, water filters, gas masks, and first aid kits. Check them out online today at CampingSurvival.com. Be sure to enter coupon code PREPPERRECON for a 5% discount on your entire order. Hey, Preppers order. and Patriots, my new book, American Exit Strategy, book one of the Economic Collapse Chronicles, is now available in audiobook format through Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Of course, you can still purchase the Kindle edition or paperback edition through Amazon as well. God-fearing patriots and those who believe in the Constitution will find this near-future dystopian novel to be right up their alley. 
those who are looking to be more informed about the potential threat to America's financial stability will learn what to watch for and how to prepare themselves for an economic collapse. In Book 1, America is on the cusp of financial annihilation. Matt and Karen Baer face the challenges of Main Street during a full-scale financial meltdown. Government borrowing and monetary creation have reached their limits. When funds are no longer available for government programs, widespread civil unrest erupts across the country. Matt and Karen are forced to move to a more remote location, and their level of preparedness is revealed as being much less adequate than they believed prior to the crisis. American Exit Strategy uses survival fiction to take an in-depth look at the real-life politics and economics behind the issues that are likely to trigger a currency collapse or financial meltdown in the near future. American Exit Strategy is a work of fiction until it becomes history. God bless and happy prepping.